right, all right, all right. Hello, everyone. Hello, and welcome to another episode of BIM After Dark Live. My name is Jeff, also known as the Revit Kid. Thank you for joining us today. I've got a guest uh, that you guys are all going to love who's uh, returning to the show. I'll introduce him in a second, but we're going to be talking about roofs in Revit. And I know it's always a it's always a hot topic, so uh, so I'm sure a lot of you are here to, to, uh, to hopefully, uh, maybe if you're beginners and learning how, how to approach just generally using roof the roof tool or potentially if you're more advanced users maybe uh how how myself or or my guest milush uh milosh sorry uh, <laughs> uh attack more complex roofs um so uh before i introduce my guest this is episode 88 by the way which is awesome if you haven't seen the previous 87 episodes uh head on over to live.bimafterdark.com or head on over to the channel here on youtube and just click the playlist for bim after dark live and you can watch all 87 previous episodes um if this is your first time here thank you for joining us and make sure you subscribe to the channel um and this is a weekly show uh if you guys have never seen it before um where i have myself or guests come on and we talk about revit and bim and all kinds of sort of related topics um if you're here right now at 12:30 eastern time usa live um, i will be checking out the chat the whole time so definitely feel free to ask questions chit chat and in, in the chat um, talk about whatever you want i'll be keeping an eye on it and trying to feed questions in um, as we go throughout the 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 episode here we've got people from all over the place um dc to houston to london to uh, Boston, Canada, I mean, all over the world, which is always really cool. This is a special time, so thanks for joining us. Usually it's 9 p.m. Eastern time, but uh, my guest is over in uh, Serbia, I believe. Uh, so uh, so if we did my normal time, it would have been 3 a.m. for him. So, <laughs> so uh, before I introduce my guest, I did want to um, take a moment to mention um, my community. Uh, so this uh, season of BIM After Dark Live is supported by the BIM After Dark community. Um, for those of you that are not familiar with the BIM After Dark community, it is a private uh, learning center for all things Revit and BIM related. Let me, oops, there we go. Let me lower the music. I know it's always too loud. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> And so what we have here is we actually have all kinds of great stuff. We have a social media type of feed um, where members can ask general questions as well as questions um, uh, specific to courses. We have full length courses. There are four courses, uh, one about presentation techniques, one about creating documentation in Revit, one about making families, and one about Dynamo. Um, we also have office hours, which is phenomenal every other week. Um, I host a live office hour. You can see uh, we have one next week. So make sure if you want to join, join soon so you can join that one. Um, but we've had 55 office hours. And those are just Zoom calls um, where we have myself with uh, uh, whoever wants to join from the group. So you can see this is about nine of us. And we talk about whatever's on your mind, uh, answering questions and so on and so forth. And just to give you an idea of sort of what, what the conversations look like, um, we have a conversation here from Carlos, who's a member, talking about cornices and how to model them and different approaches. Um, we also have a cool conversation that just happened here um, where actually Carlos asked us a question as well talking about joining uh, multiple objects and you can see we ended up actually uh, solving it with a dynamo solution and helping them out so super cool um, super fun if you're interested um, in, in checking out oh also there's sample files from all of my tutorials and my courses too so if you've seen a tutorial on the blog and so on and so forth I have sample files to all of those including templates and so on and so forth so if you are interested head on over to community.bimafterdark.com and be sure to uh, uh, come hang out with us over there. I will be, oops, sorry, Zoom just closed on me. <laughs> I, I will be uh, running a, I will be running a sale from now until December 22nd. Um, so definitely, if you want to take advantage of it, take advantage of it now. And, uh, and hopefully I'll see you guys in there. It's a super fun, super fun spot and a, a really neat way to learn Revit. Uh, so, oh, Porto, Portugal. There we go. Now we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So without further ado, um, I'm going to introduce uh, my guest. Um, let me make sure your audio is good. All right. Milush. Milosh. Milosh. I, I was trying. We were talking beforehand. I'm like, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. Uh, this is Milosh Temerinsky. Temerinsky. Oh, yes. so close. So close. Yep. Most of you probably know Milosh um, as the Balkan architect here on YouTube. So Milosh, thank you for joining the show again. 
Yeah, yeah. Thank you for having me back on, and thank you for for the special time slot. Uh, <laughs> it's no problem. The time difference. It's, it's really convenient to to have it at this time. It's no I problem. Know, <laughs> at, at one a.m., it's it's definitely not a good thing. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. I work with a couple of folks from India as well. It's the same thing where you got to figure oh, out how yeah. to make it work, and and I get it. Uh, and and it's great. And, and actually, it'll be kind of nice because I'm sure there's some people who maybe can't join me live um, when I do uh, the nine p.m. Eastern time um, that can yeah. join us live today. So it's okay to change it up every once in a while um but yeah welcome back to the show man i appreciate it i think last time you came on was almost a year ago right yeah it was something before christmas something like that so i think it's it's about a year so yep. yeah and, and we talked about some really really neat sort of design uh approaches to to revit and some interesting tips and tricks on using it as a design tool um yeah, which is, which is great fun. and i'll put a link to that episode for those of you that missed it um in in the link below um, and uh, before we jump into roofs and the topic, um, I don't know if you want to give a little introduction on yourself. I'm, I'm assuming most people that are here probably know of you just because uh, of, of your popularity and the YouTube sphere uh, in, within Revit tutorials. But maybe just give everyone a quick, quick little little shout on, on who you are and, and, and what you do. Yeah, uh, yeah, perfect. So yeah, my name is Milos Timirinsky. I'm also known online as the Balkan architect. Uh, I, I, I'm an ar architect, finished architecture school, have a master's degree, and basically what, uh, what my kind of path to Revit, uh, was basically, uh, while I was a student, I started learning Revit. And, uh, at the time, there wasn't, uh, there wasn't as many resources online. And whenever I would figure something interesting out, uh, I, I also can combine that with my love for YouTube. Uh, so I would share that on my YouTube channel, uh, the Balkan Architect. So that kind of grew from there. And now I'm uh, kind of, I, I do this full time, a content creator and an educator for, uh, for Revit. And I'm, I'm mainly on YouTube, but also on uh, Instagram and, and so on. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm a, a, a Revit, uh, kind of explorer and educator <laughs> awesome well again i appreciate you coming on um, i'll put all the links to all of your channels down below for anyone who's interested um, um and also a huge congratulations i saw you rolled over five hundred thousand subscribers on youtube i think recently yeah, yeah. that's incredible yeah. <laughs> i have to say <laughs> as as someone who's been doing this for a long time as well i understand how difficult that is so i a huge congratulations that's awesome uh and so the, for those of you who haven't seen any of milos's videos i'm assuming you have just via the youtube algorithm between mine and in, in your content i have to imagine that they've seen one or two or maybe they yeah. just mistake us on the thumbnail and think one is the other but <laughs> either way either way yeah. <laughs> yeah. either way congratulations on that's freaking awesome man really yeah yeah thank you so it's it's, it's it's so amazing just to know that there are so many people out there interesting in, interested in Revit. i actually can't believe that there's that many people it gives me hope that there's that many people interested in our content because i assumed it was a very small pool of people <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. I mean, when when I got to like uh, 10, 20 k, it was like that's it. They can't go further than that. I mean, it's <laughs> architects is already like a really small community, right. at least in my eyes. And then when you kind of add okay, Revit to that, I thought that was like there. There's nobody out there, but yeah, it turns out there's a lot of people. And I think it's more and more students and young people coming mm -hmm. to and just out of the university learning Revit. And I think it's it's really great. Yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. All right, so so let's do it. Let, let's jump right into it. Um, I, there's already some questions in the chat that I'll try and sneak in as we go on, but I want you to sort of start. I think we were just going to sort of t start with with. Um, conceptually the idea of the roof tool keep it a little basic for, for folks and then we'll and then we'll build from there i think yeah yeah perfect yeah so uh, i wanted to have this presentation just to cover roofs kind of start from the from the the basics just from the beginning and then we can go into more complicated roofs because yeah. i think gravit is really cool when you look at it like roofs are so easy to make uh just create a rectangle, add the, uh, let, let me just demonstrate here quickly. Mm -hmm. So for, uh, we can host it on level two. Let's then go up to level two. So it's just basically a rectangle. And by default, Revit will add the slope here. So if you don't know the little triangle here, it's basically telling us that uh, Revit is looking at this as an edge that has a slope to it. And that slope is 30 degrees by, by default. Uh, so you can either select it, change it here. You can select that 
edge go to the properties panel and here we have that slope and we can change it there as well or if we don't want to have slope on that uh, on that line we can just go here to define slope and uncheck that uh, option here oh it's also here on in the properties panel yeah in, in revit everything repeats so that's that's something that's good uh, so anyways by default roofs are very easy to make you just finish that and there we go so now we have a, a simple 30 degrees uh, roof uh, but when you start adding complexity to it, uh, it starts kind of breaking apart at certain points. So I, I wanted to start from kind of the, the basics and then we're going to be creating a more complicated roof. So here we just bring up an image. So uh, let's see, will this load? Okay, I don't know what's going on. Okay, so can you see this? Yep. Okay, so here we have uh, uh, basically something that I would consider a bit more complicated roof, and uh, this is something that you have to build out of multiple uh, roofs and then kind of join everything together. So this is kind of going to be the, uh, the this is what we're kind of leading to, towards. Awesome, awesome. So let us now, or do we, do we have some questions already? Uh, not or? yet, not yet. I'll, I'll sneak in if I see anything that works well. Just keep, keep doing your thing. <laughs> okay, okay, perfect. <laughs> Uh, so basically, uh, for now, let's uh, let's just first take a look at this little uh, grip point. So this is something that you may have noticed, and it basically allows you to move your roof up and down. Uh, the problem with this is it does add some weirdness to it. So if you play around with this, what you'll notice uh, is if I go back here into Edit Footprint, now it's going to change the uh, the slope here. So here, uh, I mean, obviously we're changing the slope, but it's going to give different slopes to different sides. So here it kept it at 30 degrees, here it changed. And then if we go further than that, it's going to give us a bit more craziness. And now it's, well, it's a completely different type of roof than what we've started with. So I don't like using that option. I prefer kind of customizing the slope on my own and coming in here and then saying, okay, if I want this to be 50 degrees, I can do that manually and then will have that type of a roof. But it's something that you, at least in my opinion, you want to avoid. Perhaps just kind of conceptually, if you're just looking at it, you can play around, but it's not something that they would use kind of often. Okay, so moving forward uh, for roofs, if we create them uh, by using the uh, edge with the slope, uh, it's going to have some limitations in terms of, well, first you're only defining it as a slope. You cannot really define kind of the, the top edge of the roof. So this works if your project requirements are, well, in terms of slope, uh, but if you have perhaps like a high point of, of the building and you cannot go past that, uh, in that case, it might make more sense to use a slope arrow. And this gives you a, a bit more functionality. So the slope arrow is, something that works both with roofs, but also you can use it with other types of, of elements such as floors and uh, ramps. Uh, am I missing something? I think even the foundations have uh, a slope arrow option, mm -hmm. but basically it adds a bit more, or at least a different type of, uh, of approach to defining slope. So if I uh, select all of these sites and I find I'll uncheck define slope, now this is basically a flat roof. Uh, but if we go here and add a slope arrow, now I can just add a slope arrow starting from one side going to the other. And now instead of uh, adjusting it by adding a slope in terms of degrees uh, or an angle, uh, we can just define the kind of the, the edge uh, or the height offset at the head of this arrow. So here it's set to 3000 millimeters. And if I just hit finish, it's basically going to set that up to 3000 millimeters. And then the slope is whatever it is. It's uh, it's, it's not using the slope to, to determine that it's using the, uh, the height. Uh, now, what I like about these slope arrows is it gives you uh, an option where the slope doesn't have to go perpendicular to the edge of the roof. So if we set this to uh, define slope, Basically, the slope will go from this edge and then it's just going to go perpendicularly up. However, if we're using the slope arrow, we can actually do that at an angle if we wanted to. So if I set this, oops, here it doesn't want to do that. Let's see. Let's try. Oh, uh, I think I left the slope edge there. Was that the issue? Yes, it was. So now here, this is no longer kind of following a perpendicular slope to the to one of the sides, it's following that 
slope here. So basically, it gives you a bit more uh, a bit more flexibility. So for example, if I would like to create a roof uh, that has the high point here in this edge, I could uh, just have a slope that goes like this, one on this side, one on this side, so two slope arrows. And uh, as long as they have the both, uh, both have the same offset at head, it's just going to create that roof. And I don't have to bother with calculating what's going to be the, the slope on this side and on this side, it's just going to give me that that solution. So it's something that that's that could be used in certain cases, obviously not always, but when you have a situation where you have to determine uh, either that highest point of the roof or uh, you, you just want to kind of fit it in to look exactly how you want it to look, trying to follow a certain concept for your project. I think slope arrows are really powerful. Yeah, I, th I think okay. I think I think I want to pause for a moment on that, just so people can okay. can sink in on what you just did there, because that's huge, and I don't think a lot of people know that you can do that. Which is you can use multiple slope arrows, like you just showed, as long as they're their rules, I guess, is the best term I think for use. I guess rules <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Are, are 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 the same. So if you have the the tails touching or the heads touching, right? As long as those offsets are the same, you can actually do that. And I think you can do that with floors and most other things that use slope arrows. I think, but I know for a yeah. fact, like you showed on it, you can do it on roofs, which is really cool because I don't think a lot of people know that. Um, the when you think about what you know. And, and I urge everyone out there to try it and just find all the ways it breaks. But once you start, you know, messing with it, you can you can realize like that's actually a really neat tip. Like being able to to control a point if you wanted, or like you were just showing there where you have that triangle piece. Those are roofs that doing it an old school way uh, of just using slopes and calculations can be really challenging. Yeah, because you would here we have a difference because it's not a perfect rectangle uh, or square uh, here, then if we try to do this with just slope, so let me just show like, why why is this so powerful. <laughs> so if here I try just to use slope and, okay, so it would give us this basically. So it would break it somewhere along this line. And then we would have to kind of figure out, okay, so perhaps here, if I try, I don't know if I try 25, will that work? And we're never going to get that perfect well, we can, but it does require a bit of math, right. which I, I think architects don't like. Mm. So, yeah. Nope. <laughs> awesome. So, slope arrows, yeah, they're really powerful. And something else that they've, when I was uh, doing my research on roofs, uh, something else that they've noticed is uh, you can do some wild things with them and they don't break. So, for example, this, I thought this was just going to break, but yeah, it just gives <laughs> us a regular roof. So, you can, you can kind of take them further uh, and yeah. grab it will give you a solution. So I think it's uh, it's it's worth exploring. Mm -hmm. I think unless, we, uh, I think if they touch here, it's going to break. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think this is, oh, oh it's not. Wow. Oh, okay. I thought it was going to break too. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think it's really powerful just to explore it a little bit and develop a feel for it. Mm -hmm. And then it's just going to give you a lot more possibilities. Uh, when it comes to roofs. I know, especially students, when they have those wild kind of university projects, of course. Uh, yeah. you, you never have like a regular roof. So if you want to have something a bit different and you don't want to go into massing, uh, slope arrows are definitely something to to explore. Yeah, uh, no, that's awesome. That's great. And, uh, and, and just like you said, uh, everyone out there, if you're new or advanced, just mess around with this and put as many as you can, overlap them, like start to find the limits. But uh, when I first saw that, uh, uh, I don't remember when it, where I read it or saw it, but it was I think it was for floors when I messed around with it. But either way, the fact that you can use multiples and, and, and whatnot, I didn't realize that you could touch tail to, to, to head there either. <laughs> I thought that was going to break, which is pretty cool. But definitely, I know there's a lot of, um, especially in residential, there's a lot of interesting um, roofs where you're trying to make those valleys or those, you know, those hips connect correctly. And this could be a potential solution. So go break stuff. <laughs> yeah, and one more thing, perhaps because we're we're already here. Uh, when it comes to working with Revit, and sometimes you might find yourself in a situation where a thing like breaks and it doesn't want to do the thing you want it to do. I think it's worth kind of exploring, and especially when you're doing massing, just going into that shape and try to tweak it, and try to tweak it here, try to tweak it there. Uh, it does follow some rules, which when you kind of figure them out, it makes so much sense. Mm -hmm. But 
we we uh, obviously we don't know them all and it does take so much kind of uh, experimentation and, and back and forth trial and error yep. uh, but i think it's worth exploring and not giving up uh, if, if it breaks for the first time that doesn't mean it's not possible maybe you just have to tweak it somewhere just a little bit and it, it will work mm-hmm. definitely yeah Okay, so uh, let's move forward now also for uh, the slope arrows. You can use them uh, with groups that already have uh, defined slopes, uh, but you can use them to define a slope of a certain part of the edge. So let me show you here in this situation. If I use the split line, oh, the split element tool, and if I split this, so I'm going to split it here, here, and here, okay? And then if I select these two segments in the middle, and I'm just going to uncheck the fine slope uh, on those two in the middle, then I can use the slope arrow here and go from the edge all the way here and then go to the other side as well. So I'm just following those lines that I've split. If we do that, and then of course here the heads are touching and we need to make sure that the height is wherever we want it to be. So let's try 2000 millimeters here it's going to give you this solution. So I'm, I'm maybe I should have moved it in the center, but basically this is what we get. Uh, so you can get this style of roof. So it's not only something to use it to give kind of the slope to the entire roof, but also for certain parts of a more complicated roof, uh, these slope arrows can can help there as well. <laughs> that's, that's awesome, actually. I, I've never even thought about using it that way. And I don't think anyone else probably in the yeah. chat will, um, which is pretty epic, so. Sweet, man. Keep going, keep going. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a cool additional option. Uh, okay, so let's see what's uh, the next one. Okay, so now uh, for for my next trick. <laughs> uh, so let's now move to uh, attaching roofs to walls. So if I just here, let's place some walls here. So just a rectangle up to level two. Uh, because something that they've noticed is Revit really looks at uh, roofs uh, differently, the way that they're drawn, uh, and, and it just gives you a different connection to the to the roof. So let me just show you here, perhaps if I have two of these, it might make it a bit easier. So anyways, let's now start. So roof uh, at level two, and uh, now we have basically three different approaches for uh, placing a roof on top of this building. So the first approach would be just to use simple lines and then just sketch it out. Uh, now, uh, that, that would be one option. Uh, the second option would be to pick lines and then pick out lines of that wall which you want to use. And then the third option would be to use pick walls. Uh, now, these three options give us uh, the well, it gives us two different results. Uh, the lines and pick lines basically gives a, give us give us a similar option, whereas the pick walls give uh, gives us something different. So let me just use the pick walls, and then I'm going to use the, this option here for an overhang. So basically, how far the roof goes beyond the uh, the, the the house or the the, the walls. So let's go with uh, something like 600 millimeters. And now if I select it, it basically works as a as an offset. So it's just going to be placing those lines here as an offset like that. And then when we hit finish, basically we're going to have that roof there. Uh, now if I just go and let's see here, roofs. Okay, and now let's do the same thing, but with pick lines. And I'm just going to give it a same 600 millimeter offset, just like that. So this, see, when I kind of go off at the angle, you'll notice that this roof sits a bit higher than this one. Hmm. Uh, now we can also explore that if I go here and run a section through these two. You're going to notice that this one where we used thick walls kind of hosted the, or can place that wall exactly to fit to the outside edge of the, of the wall. Uh, whereas for this one where we use pick lines and just drawing it would do the same thing. Uh, it uh, it hosted that uh, roof where it, kind of the, the lowest point of the roof uh, uh, overlaps or lines up with the top of the wall. So that's just get different behavior that you're going to get uh, when you use those two different approaches to place roofs on top of, uh, on top of a house or on top of walls. 
then of course we have that option to attach the walls to the top base, attach them to the roof. That's quite basic. Uh, but then you have some uh, additional options when it comes to hosting uh, roofs like this. Uh, so here, uh, when you place a roof on top of a set of walls, uh, you're going to notice that here under construction, we have this rafter or truss option. Uh, now for this roof, it's not going to give us that because it's not hosted on those walls. So it uh, just doesn't doesn't have that option. So here, what that means is if I zoom in here, you're going to notice that if I switch it from trust to rafter, it's going to flip it. So basically it's going to bring down the roof. So it, it kind of intersects with that inside edge of the wall. Whereas for the truss, it's going to intersect at the outside edge of the wall. Uh, so basically, it's it's really up to you, up to the project. I guess here uh, it's an option. If, are you using a truss or rafter construction? Uh, but of course, it's going to be up to you. What like what are your project requirements and what you're trying to do? Uh, but it's an interesting option that we have here uh, for for construction. Yeah, no, especially in residential, I think that's huge for people for people to understand. I don't know why. It defaults to trust. It kind of annoys me. Um, unless I don't know if it holds anymore in twenty three. If it holds that setting, but um, I, it's always bothered me that it defaults to trust. But uh, the key, the key there is, I think um, you have to be. Do you have to be the walls have to be attached, or do you have to be pick wall to create it? I don't remember. In order to get uh, that setting, oh, well, let's 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 test that. So, here, <laughs> uh, so this is not attached, uh, yep, and, and we, it wasn't pick wall, right? Yep. So it doesn't. So if I try to attach it, let's see, will we have that option? No, so it's only for pick walls. Mm. Yeah, yeah, because it's the hosting of the wall itself, and then the the attached. I thought so, but yeah, but that's that's interesting to note because it's, so many people do what you just did, and they'll adjust the offset of the roof in order to make that the connection they want for a rafter, which is usually like you said, it's the inside piece. So, um, you know, it's good yeah, to know that when when you do it this way, you can flip it, and it's also it's it's an argument for using the pick wall tool versus just sketching or just pick line is that you're actually given a, a, a different functionality, which is kind of neat. Yeah, a Revit looks at it different. And then of course, as you said, you don't have to offset it. You don't have to calculate it, mm -hmm. measure it. And so it already has that built in. So I think just looking at roofs and uh, constructing them and using the proper tools is really important because later on uh, it will give you uh, just additional options like we have here. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, so uh, let's then continue. Uh, so yeah. while we're here at the construction, uh, we also have this raptor cut option. So by default, it's always going to be plumb cut, uh, which basically means that you're going to have this edge, which is kind of straight vertical cut. Uh, now, if I zoom in here, and then if I change this from plumb cut to two cut plumb, it's going to give us basically a horizontal edge. And then you're also going to notice if we set it to square, nothing's really going to change. Now, it's not that nothing changes, it's uh, basically the fascia depth is something that we have to adjust so we can see the difference between these two. So when we set it to plumb cut, and here, let me add something like 300, let's see, will that give us a change? Yeah. So that will basically mean that you have that cut where it's vertical and horizontal, and that's what that roof is going to look like in the end. So we're going to have something that looks like this, perhaps if I go into shaded. Ah, that's okay, I think. Yeah, so basically this is the uh, raptor cut or the edge of the roof that we're going to get compared to, for example, this here. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we also have that option if we set it to a square, which is just going to cut it perpendicular to the slope of the, of the roof. So it's going to give this effect. And then it's really up to you how far you want to take this. So if I set it to 500, it's just going to give us that perpendicular cut, uh, which kind of follows like the natural line of, uh, of the rafters. If you, uh, if you have rafters that end at that kind of perpendicular edge, which you might have, uh, this is then what that would look like. And it's really up to you kind of to figure out what you have, how to fit it in and what type of construction you're, uh, you're going for. But it's it's nice to know th that you have these tools there uh, at your disposal so you can kind of pick what, what works best for you. 
Okay, so uh, now let's also, while we're here exploring the, the properties panel, uh, we also have this cutoff level, uh, which I uh, I don't know if, if you have figured, figured out a good use of that. I uh, haven't I, actually, so I'm interested to see, are you just gonna show or are you gonna talk yeah, about it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have much more than that. So yeah. <laughs> if you want to cut a hole, a hole in your roof, the cutoff level is a really useful tool for that because you can just say, okay, I want to cut it at 1000 millimeters and you apply that change and you have a big hole in your roof. So yeah, I, I, I don't know. My <laughs> only thought was like, a, like at a, a mansard, like you're showing right now, like a mansard roof that stops and then there's a flat roof behind it. But, yeah. but, but like in that situation, you usually want to probably sketch the actual mansard roof as the outline. <laughs> right. So I'm, yeah, I, I agree. I have, I have actually yet to, to use that in practice, uh, other than just messing around with it to see what it meant or what it does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's Maybe just... someone in the comments or, or in the chat can let us know if they have a practical use for the cutoff level. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that would be cool to know. Yeah, I, I also didn't know, so I, I think it makes sense to kind of unleash it to a larger audience. <laughs> yeah, <see>. yeah. <laughs> Perhaps somebody has a solution or a, a, a use for this, but yeah, we we also uh, have that that option as yeah. well. Okay, so let's see what else I uh, have here. So I think we've covered this part. Uh, now uh, for the flat roofs, I don't want to go too much into this uh, just because it's a kind of a topic of uh, on, on its own. Mm -hmm. uh, but I thought uh, perhaps just uh, sharing a, a, a tip or something that I like to do when it comes to flat roofs. So let me Definitely. show you. Yeah, so, or kind of solving an issue with flat roofs. So I'm just going to uh, create a a building here so something that looks like that perhaps okay so let's say we have these walls here and then i'm just going to try to extend this a little bit okay so let's say we have a building that looks like this and now we have to host a flat roof on top of that so that's easy enough. I'm just going to go here to roofs, uh, level two, that's okay. And then we can just use big walls and obviously give zero overhang and then uh, uncheck the fine slope because it's a flat roof. And then we can just pick out those edges. So if we do something like this, so we have that roof and then obviously I would uh, pull the walls up a little bit. So let's give them a a small offset on top. So basically, if you have something like this as your uh, flat roof, uh, obviously all of the flat roofs are not flat. They do have some small slope for the drainage. Uh, and for that, you would use the shape editing tools. Uh, now, if you uh, add points and if you add split lines, uh, sometimes it's going to give you a good solution, but sometimes it's going to kind of mess things up. So. If you just want to kind of keep it simple, add a uh, kind of a point in the middle. Let's see. Oops. Uh, modify sub elements and say, okay, I want minus ten here. It's going to give you something like this. So obviously, it's trying to figure out how to kind of angle the planes towards that. But because we have that kind of uneven edge, it's going to give us uh, a, a breaks, and it just doesn't look good, and it doesn't work well uh, either. So something that I figured out that works for me, I don't know if it's like a proper solution, but it does seem to do the job uh, a bit more elegantly. And that's to go here to level two, and then to create that roof, I would just use a rectangle like this, finish, uh, go back to the 3D view, add that point now in the middle, and let's give it minus 15. So now we have something that makes a bit more sense. So what I would do now is just go and make a vertical opening for this roof. And then I would, oops, well, level two, and then I would just kind of cut off this part here. I, I don't know, does it have to be a single boundary or it's, mm -hmm. let's test it. Okay, it can do the job. So now we have something that looks a bit more uh, elegant. It doesn't give us all of those breaks. So uh, this is one solution. Is this something that you use, or perhaps, or no? I've, I've actually just battled with sloped or with with the points to try and make it right. Uh, but usually, what I end up doing is using split lines to try and make the geometry make sense. But that's actually mm -hmm. a great, even if even if 
even if you did this first to to potentially use these lines to draw you know a separate roof maybe that has like mm -hmm. you know the now you can follow these lines to make maybe even your your split lines and then you can actually make the yeah. geometry work or something i don't know but yeah no that's that's a great great idea so, so you're, you're rationalizing it with a with a square or a circle uh and then you're getting the yeah. point in the middle so no that that's that would be super helpful the way i'm thinking about it is is um I, i'm just not a huge fan of the opening tool because it just as, as you know, right, it, it has to be hosted to a level of some sort. And so sometimes you can click it and stuff, you know, when you're in the level, it's kind of weird. Uh, but uh, but as far as solving the geometry, it's a great solution. And then my, my thought immediately goes to maybe I can use this, even if I don't keep it with an opening as the final, use it as the tool to generate the points more accurately, you know, to, to get rid of all those stupid edges that you were seeing. I don't know. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's cool. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's awesome. It's great. Yeah, so so that's that's one solution uh, with using a, a vertical opening. Uh, yeah, so that's for uh, flat roofs. Uh, and then finally, I just want to show you. Uh, so here, when I was looking at this uh, roof, uh, we had this option with pick supports. So uh, I don't know if this is something that people explore. I think it's a really cool uh, option that we have. When you are modeling a construction, you can actually just host your roof or uh, floor, or whatever. You can actually uh, host it on that construction. So here I have a different project. So let me just open it up. Uh, okay. Uh, so here we have this project where we just have some construction. Obviously, it's not finished, but it will do the job. Uh, so I can simply go here to uh, the site plan. And then if I just use a simple roof, uncheck uh, define slope. And let's just go from the grid intersection to grid intersection. Okay. So if you just have a, a roof like this, if I go to the 3D view, you can just select that pick supports and you just pick these, uh, the the beams that we have here or the framing, and it will simply adjust that to that. So I think it's a really cool option that we have. If you already have that structure, you don't want to kind of uh, spend extra time on the roof. You can just adjust it and yeah, that's that's it. That's awesome. That's the job. Yep, yep, great. Yeah. Okay, so it's a it's an, another cool option to explore. Okay, so let me just close this up and let's now uh, uh, let's now uh, tackle that uh, complicated kind of compound roof. So I'm just going to open up a separate project here. Okay, so I have just these walls and uh, yeah, I, this is really annoying. This is something that uh, happens in Revit. Uh, so if you're wondering, in Revit 2020.2 version. If you open older files, this will appear. So this is just the project origin. And uh, you can always turn it on and off, no matter which version you're in. Mm -hmm. uh, it's usually by default, it's set to, to be off. So if you don't know how to turn it off, uh, it's a useful tip. Uh, go to visibility graphics, uh, find the site, and then on the site tab here, internal origin. And if we just uncheck that visibility, it's gone. So if you find that annoying, <laughs> this is how you get rid of it. Okay, so let's take a look at this roof. So this is basically what we're uh, building. And I just wanna show you my approach to doing something like this. Obviously it's going to be different for each roof, but I think it makes sense kind of go over one of them and then just give you a basic idea of what the approach would be. And then you can kind of figure out on your own roofs. For sure. uh, so uh, let's start. So basically here, I'm going to start with this roof here. So you have to do it as multiple roofs that are joined together. So I'm just going to take this one as a starting point. So what I would do here is just go to roof, and host it on level two, because that's that's here. Uh, I'm, I'm going to use pick walls, and then I'm going to give it an overhang of 0.6 meters, okay, and just give it an overhang like that. And then here, uh, because I don't really have a wall to pick, I'm just going to have a straight line like that. And then let's use trim and extend to corner just to fix it up. Okay, then uh, I'm going to turn off slope on these two. So turn off the fine slope and the slope for these will be left at 30. So once we have something that looks like this, perhaps I can extend it a bit. Okay, looks good. So now when we hit finish, uh, this is what we have. So we have kind of a, a beginning here. 
Uh, now, obviously, it's going into the house, so we have to solve that. So then I would go back to Edit Footprint, and I would adjust the edge here. So I prefer uh, to do it kind of sloppy at the beginning mm -hmm. and then readjust it later on. Uh, something that I repeat all, all the time is Revit means revise and edit. So th that's usually the approach you want to use. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's fix this up here, uh, this too. And then let's turn off the slope here. Uh, uh, okay. So once we finish that, now we have something that, that looks like this. Okay, so for the next step, uh, we have this, I think it's like an entrance or, or patio or something like that. So we have to add that additional roof here. So what I would do is I would go here into edit roof and then I would add, uh, add a certain edge here like so. Okay, uh, here this one doesn't have to have slope. So let's uncheck the find slope and let's fix it up like this. Okay, so now we have that patio roof, but we have a problem because uh, we have that overhang uh, and then it just kind of overshoots the edge of the house. So that's one problem that we have. Another problem that we have and something that I didn't cover before, so it's, it's a really good uh, uh, example now to cover that, and that's the height of the eaves. So here you can see if we look at this kind of from the front, you can see that this part here where we have that overhang hangs a lot lower than these two parts here. And for this side, uh, we don't really care as much at, at, the, at the moment, but here it obviously makes sense to go all the way down and make it kind of uh, symmetrical. So how do you do that? Uh, oops, not that one, okay. So what you wanna do there is you wanna select that roof go into Edit Footprint, and now here we have this option Align Eaves. So if I select uh, or if I click on Align Eaves, it's going to report the height or the elevation of each of the eaves. Now currently it's showing a zero, and that's because I think I didn't uh, uh, for my project units. So <laughs> let's see here, project uh, units. Uh, for my uh, length, I didn't add uh, decimal places. So if I add a couple of decimal places because I'm working with meters here, now if I go edit footprint, align eaves, now you can see that here we have this is at minus three five, mm -hmm. and these two are at zero, which kind of corresponds to what we see. So what I can do here is I can either adjust the overhang or adjust the height. Uh, now here I want to adjust the height, so I'm just going to check that option. And then it works basically like the align tool. You first select what you want to align to, and then what you're aligning. And then this one, perfect. And when I hit finish, now you can see these are now symmetrical and they are there, they kind of look good. Uh, and while we're here, if I go back to my first project here, uh, whenever you have this situation where you have a roof that was constructed by back walls, and let's get rid of this uh, cutoff uh, level, uh, if you decide to ch change just the roof without moving the walls. So if you move the walls, the roof moves, that's obvious. But if you select the roof itself and move it, add kind of an, a, a larger overhang here, it's going to look like this. Mm -hmm. And uh, usually I would just freak out when this happens. So uh, essentially what's going on is the, the alignment of the eaves is off. So what you just wanna do is you wanna select this, go into edit footprint, go to align eaves, and then uh, you can adjust either the overhang or the height. So let me show you for the overhang. Uh, basically, you would select this, you would select this, and then it would bring it back in. Uh, now, obviously, if you don't want that, if you still want to have that overhang, then you would go here and adjust the height, and then you would just click on this one and on this one, and once you finish, it's just going to extend that roof kind of normally. Mm -hmm. So we have that uh, that that option uh, as well. Uh, okay, so uh, now uh, also you can uh, adjust the height of each of these lines of, uh, of the boundary, uh, something else that can make sense to cover. So if I select one of these edges, uh, you can uh, obviously adjust the angle, you can adjust if it defines slope, uh, but also you can uh, adjust an offset. So here we have the plate offset from base, which is basically referring to the offset from the, uh, from the wall here that we have. 
uh, but that's going to appear on all uh, all roofs. So even this one, this one is just going to have a basic offset from roof base. So that's another difference between uh, having it uh, built uh, with the pick walls and having it built with pick lines. So this one with pick lines has that offset from roof base. And this one with pick walls uh, has that uh, offset from uh uh, plate offset from base. So what this basically does is if we, let's test it out here. So if I set this to, okay, let's try 500 and apply. So it's basically going to uh, bring that wall up a little bit. So uh, essentially it's going to move the, the whole roof part up so the, the wall can be uh, a little bit higher. So that, that's what it did here. So it just brought it up a little bit. So that's just another uh, thing that we have uh, in terms of roofs. And then if you do that here on this one that uh, that was just used, uh, where we just use lines, if I select these two edges and give it, let's say 500 millimeter offset, it's just going to bring it up like this. So that's, that's what we get. So that's kind of some different uh, functionality in terms of height of each of the lines that we drew. Yeah, no, that's actually, and that actually answers someone quite someone's question. I think Lee asked in the chat a while ago when you first, when we were talking about truss versus rafters, um, he was asking about, you know, what if you have an uh, inch and a half ceiling that you want to use, but it's based off of that plate and a rafter, you know, there's obviously different approaches, but the setting you just chose or were showing in, which is the offset from top of wall or core or whatever it's called um that's one approach too is if it's a consistent if it's a consistent offset that you're using then now you're 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 using that plate height as your base and you're using that setting instead of again moving the roof and modifying offsets from levels and all that stuff which is cool yeah it's a it's a cool option yeah i, I think for roofs yeah this just shows how much uh functionality and how much uh, how, how many options we actually do have it's they're just hidden uh, under terms that we might not know. What <laughs> right, <we need>. right. <laughs> awesome. But that's, that's general for for okay. Revit. So yeah, let's let's get back to our project. So we fixed the eave height issue, but still we have this issue here where it just doesn't align with the just doesn't go up to the wall, and we want to have that. So here we don't really have a choice. We have to add another wall segment because we cannot have it as part of the same wall. So for that, I'll just go here to roofs, expand that and use roof by extrusion, which works best here. And then for the plane, I can just pick out this wall here. Uh, this will be a level two, okay. And then we can just use pick lines, pick this line here, hit finish, and it's going to place that uh, roof segment there. Yeah. Uh, now, obviously we want to align it. So I'm just going to use the align tool to align it to this edge here. I'm just using the tab key to place it. We can lock it in place and then select the wall and this side and we can lock it in place there. And then finally you just use join geometry to bring it all together in one kind of in one roof. I love that. That's actually a neat approach um, in the sense that a lot of people might draw that dormer as a separate roof and then push it in um, and then align it. But the other thing you could you, you could probably do, too, is when you're doing the pick line, you could probably lock that, I would imagine, too. And this way, yeah, it'll move yeah, with the slope, too. And so that's great because then it's, you know, you're not making two extra extrusions. You're just using the roof by footprint which is, or roof by extrusion. Two, you're not making two extra footprints. You're making, you know, the extrusion plus the footprint. Pretty cool. Yeah, like and it. then you, I, I guess, uh, as you said, with the, with that approach, if you lock in the line and the edges, whenever you make adjustments to the original roof, mm -hmm. the this small segment will follow yep. the chain. Exactly. Which is perfect. Yep, yeah. Cool. Okay, so let's go now forward, and now let's do this roof here in the front. So for that, uh, I'm just going to come in here, and again, uh, roof by footprint, level two. Uh, let's use again select. Uh, walls and go from there. So just like that. And then I'll just use a simple line to uh, bring it in like that. And then we can fix that up. Uh, and I just don't want to have slope on these two sides. So uncheck that. Okay, and we get something that looks like this. Uh, so now again, we have uh, an issue where it just enters the house here. So let's go back into edit footprint, use back lines and add these two lines, uh, uncheck the fine slope for those and use trim and extend to fix them up. 
Okay, so now once we have this, we have to connect it with this roof here, and that's that works basically uh, the same option that we would use to connect a dormer to our roof, uh, which is this uh, join unjoin roof option. So then we would pick out, I think it's first this edge and then this uh, face, and there we go. So now these two are uh, connected. And then finally, uh, if we take a look kind of from the inside, uh, we don't want to see this kind of roof edge on the inside. We want to use up that ceiling height. Uh, so we can just open that up by uh, going here to a, uh, let's see, dormer opening. Uh, we select that uh, roof to open, and then we can pick out the edges, which is this one, this one here. Uh, here, I think we have that wall edge, and finally the, the edge at the bottom. And then we can just, again, use trim and extend to corner to clean it up, and now it's completely open. So now we have that open uh, roof on the inside. Okay, so we have finished this roof. Uh, let's now keep going. So let me see where that image is. Okay, uh, so uh, the next part, uh, let's see, let's do the roof on top here. So for that roof, kind of looking at it here, it seems like this whole mm. face is connected with this one. So we kind of want to connect those two. So let's see how can we do that. So what I'll do here is, again, I'm going to use roof and then use roof by extrusion. And for the plane, let's pick out this plane here, level three. So this one is actually on level three. And then I would use pick lines and pick it here. And now, as you mentioned, we can lock that in. And then we can just figure out how far we want to take it up. So I can say, okay, so let's follow that up here perhaps, and then go from there at the similar angle. So I think that's 30 degrees. Yeah, go down to there. Okay, it looks good enough. Perhaps a bit higher. Okay, so once we have this roof created, uh, by default, Revit is going to, when you're creating a roof by extrusion, uh, Revit is going to figure out where is kind of the boundary of your building, just from the walls. And then if you want to have that overhang, you can adjust it here. So uh, in this case, uh, I'm just going to extend it up here by 0. 0.6, which is going to give me 7.4. And then here uh, at the start, I'm just going to give it 0. 0.6. So if I hit apply, it's going to give that extension. Perfect. And here, I think I have extended it. Something that I didn't really consider is if we go here, I think from the east elevation, okay? So here I want this to be offset 600 millimeters. So I can just draw a line there and say, okay, 600. Oops. Oh, that was meters. meters. <laughs> yeah, 0.6. Okay, perfect. Yeah. And then I can just get rid of this line and hit finish. There we go. So now we have this roof and we just need to uh, join it. So join geometry join these two together and we have that roof. Uh, now, something that, that I like to do when it comes to roofs is, or complicated roofs like this, I like to leave the uh, joining walls to roofs for the end, hmm. just because we're going to be adding more roofs and then it just, sometimes we're going to have some weirdness <laughs> going on. So it, uh, at least for me, it makes sense to leave it for, kind of for the end. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so let's now take a look here. Uh, okay, so I just want to do this roof here in the front and then this, uh, which is like a patio or whatever roof there. So let's just do two, uh, those two. So let's go here to level two. Oops, not that one. Uh, level two, okay. Zoom in. And then here uh, for this roof, it's just going to be a roof. We can uncheck the fine slope and create a roof there. Uh, and then we can obviously lock it in place if you want. That would make sense. And then here, let's give it a slope of 30 degrees. Perfect. Go to the 3D view and again. <laughs> you get burned by that project. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I should probably close down as many of these as possible. Okay. <laughs> so once we finish this, uh, we have two issues. The first one is kind of it's up in the air, and the second one it's poking out here at the edges. 
So the first one is the easy fix. We could just go to the south elevation, uh, use the move tool and just move it down. Uh, but that doesn't really solve the, the issue here. So for that, what you want to do is simply go into edit footprint and just adjust this at a 45 degree angle. Oops. There was something wrong there. Okay. Remove constraints. Oh, it, it's the constraints. Yeah. So anyways, we can pull this one in as well. Remove constraints. Yeah, perfect. And now it's going to follow that edge of the roof perfectly. And then it's just a matter of going to join geometry and joining those together there. Perfect. And then finally, let's do the roof here. Uh, so for that level two, and let's go architecture roof. We can have it like something like this. And here we want to have that 30 degree slope. Okay, so again, it's kind of up in the air. So uh, let's go down to the south elevation and bring this one down as well. So move, move it down. And now here we're going to have some work just kind of fitting this in properly. So what you want to do first is just fix this edge. Obviously, it shouldn't go inside of that roof. So that's simple enough. Add a footprint and then go from the intersection here at a 45 degree angle. And that should fix it. So let's see. There we go. Uh, and then also we want to fix this roof. So we want to go to edit footprint and then we can just use pick lines and pick this edge here and then just use trim and extend to corner to fix this. And then this one is not necessary. And we get something that looks like that. And then we can just join that as well. Perfect. And now once we have this, it's uh, just a matter of attaching the walls. So I'm going to start with this wall here, uh, attached on base. First, I'm going to select this roof here. So that one is attached. Then again, attached up base, select this roof, uh, then select this one, attached up base. So that goes up to here. Uh, now this one is going to be tricky because it should kind of cover uh, this little gap that we have there. So let's go attached up base, attach it first there and then here. So now it attaches to both of them. Mm -hmm. And then let's do the rest of these. So this one, it's only going to attach to here. This one is attaching to this wall there. And we finally just have this one and that should be it. So there we go. Uh, it's a complicated roof, but mm -hmm. we have like one segment to three, four, five, six. So we've kind of figured this out with six different roof segments and we can create something that that's a kind of a complicated compound roof as this one. Awesome. Yeah. Sweet. That's really cool, man. Uh, I've been checking along uh, the chat and, and there's some questions here and there, but nothing specific. I think you actually answered them as you were going along, which is great. Uh, so I did, that's why I didn't really interject in too many. So I appreciate that. Um, but I think everyone so far has really appreciated uh, just watching the process of how you problem solve this specific roof, but how, how you took those little tips and tricks and, and use them there. I definitely, I definitely appreciated it. Um, you know, the interesting thing, just on a on an architectural note as someone who's gone through this process many times, uh, even when I was learning Revit, when, when I first started learning Revit, it was um, high-end residential. So it was a lot of these ridiculous roofs. And, uh, yeah. you know, w one of the things that, um, you know, that I always, you know, beyond Revit that I always sort of took away from that is a lot of times floor plans were designed to work without the thought of the roof. And that's why you see the crazy yeah. shit that we deal with all the time. Um, and so yeah. I think the, the key and what I like about how you've approached it is um, you're kind of roughing out the roof along the way. And if I'm the designer um, and I start doing that, um, you're not locking yourself into figuring everything out right away, which means maybe you adjust the floor plan a little bit to make the roof less likely to leak or, <laughs> or be awkward. Right. And so I like the approach because it's, it's sort of that sort of, architectural process approach of like, let's not attach the walls right away. So 
for everyone out there, when Revit tells you, do you want to attach the walls every time you click finish roof, <laughs> say no, right? You don't have to say it right away. First of all, I say no because you never know what walls it's picking. <laughs> and, but, but then it allows you to sort of have that freedom to, to play with these things and maybe even adjust the walls to make the roofs make more sense, right? And that, you know, and so I like that. So I appreciate that. Um, I was just double yeah, checking to make sure there wasn't any any major questions but no i think i think so i think we hit everything go ahead sorry Perfect. yeah uh, i i i think that we should as architects or i i know i i have that thing where i i want my model to be perfect at each stage mm -hmm. i want it to be nice to look at just because as architects we like aesthetics so that's something that can really slow you down in the design process. It can give you limitations further on. So working with like an unfinished model, as you said, not attaching the, the, the walls, leaving an option where we can perhaps play around with the floor plan a little bit if it's going to improve the, the roof uh, construction and so on. Mm -hmm. So kind of forcing ourselves to work with a model that doesn't look that nice, I think it's it, it's good from time to time. <laughs> yes, 100%. You know? I guess I was more on a soapbox of like when I get asked questions sometimes and, and they show me like the roof details, I'm like there's no way that anyone thought of this in 3D or whatever while they were doing it because you would yeah. never, like there clearly was a floor plan driven. But no, these tips and tricks, I think they were awesome. I, I really appreciate it. Um, I was just double checking. Uh, is it being able to talk? So, so um, uh, Liz asked if being able to attach attach to multiple roofs is new. No, you could always attach to multiple roofs. I think an interesting part point there um, when you were attaching that um, that uh, porch thing, um, you mentioned the high and the low area. How you kind of had to fill in that little gap. Oh yeah, here. Um, oh, I think we have a little yeah uh, with the connection. So let's see here. Yeah. So you're, it, it, no. there's definitely always going to run into some of those. You may be able to fix it with with some some little tweaks, but um, the the interesting thing too is, um, and I don't know, maybe 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 you've played with this more than me to understand. But do, do, does it matter if you attach high before low or the order of attachment? Would you say? Uh, I don't know to be honest. I've, I I I usually kind of go by feel. I I try to do the complicated one first. Mm -hmm. At least that's so the the one that has more breaks, uh, and the one that they expect uh, expect to give me more headaches. I usually do that one first, and then if that one works, I attach the other one. Mm -hmm. uh, just my experience. Sometimes you attach kind of the, the easy one, yep. it kind of follows by the, uh, the, yeah. the line of the roof, and then when you try to do the other one, it just doesn't want to follow that. Yep. Know? I I was curious. I yeah, because I'm I've been in the same boat where I I haven't I haven't found a rule of thumb that works, but I have noticed for those of you that are going through this process, sometimes the order of attachment does do funny things, but but I, there's no like rule of thumb which makes more sense based on the condition just if it's not doing what you want maybe unattach and try the other order or something just to see what happens basically it's, it's kind of yeah, my, it's, my tip there <laughs> yeah, for everything in Revit if it doesn't work one way you can try to reverse yeah. the order of things that you're doing and it might solve the, the yeah. problem <laughs> so do, don't be afraid to break stuff right well, <laughs> well oh, Milos I mean I really appreciate you coming on this was awesome I know everyone in the chat is absolutely loving loving uh, the tips that, that you, you've dropped here which is great um, and I appreciate that. I'm sure everyone looking at this in the future will, will feel the same. Any final words or, or, or uh, anything that you want anyone here to, to know before we wrap up? Yeah, no, I, I th thank you for, for having me on, uh, it, uh, especially again, it, it's an honor. And yeah, it, it was really fun. And I like sharing tips like this and also kind of getting feedback from the audience. Some things that, because I like to kind of go uh, deep into Revit, especially when I'm creating my content and just explore all of the little settings that we have. Mm -hmm. For a lot of them, I just don't know like what I would use them for. Mm -hmm. So I like that kind of sharing it into the world mm -hmm. and then getting feedback, especially like this, like live feedback. Yep. Like I can share something like, I don't know what I would use this for, but we have that option. And then someone would say, yeah, I use it for whatever. Yep. So I think it's, it's good to have that kind of connection with the audience and mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, definitely. So definitely, I know you were live, so I, I would definitely check back and, and read through the chat because there were some yeah. great, there's some great feedback for you to check out uh, that you may have okay. missed because you were presenting. So I, I would definitely say there was some really good feedback. And the other thing I appreciate is not uh, not being afraid to start um, with 101, you know, beginner type of stuff, because I know myself personally, having used Revit for so long, I'm sure you feel the same way. As you create content and use it for so long, it can be, it can be easy to forget 
what it was like to be a beginner and 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 we jump ahead of of some of these beginner things so i appreciate it i'm sure there's people out there who did too to sort of the very basics of it and then work in but then also it also usually shows that there's so many different ways to approach even beginner 101 type of stuff right which is awesome so i appreciate that yeah, yeah, something that they're trying to do at the moment, something that they've realized, and I'm sure you've, you've had this kind of uh, dilemma in the past, where uh, on, on one hand, you uh, you have your kind of long-term uh, audience that you've been following you for a while, and they're experts, and they usually just want you to kind of skip to the most interesting like part of the video, and then you have your perhaps newer audience, the beginners that kind of just want to, wait, how did you get to that part? Like, it's it's cool, but I don't know how how, how to follow to that. So I'm having like uh, at, at this point I'm trying to figure out the speed of my presentation. So hopefully here the speed was good for everybody, where it's not too slow, where it's boring, but it's also not too fast, where you can't really keep up. So it's it's something that kind of we we as presenters have to think about. Awesome. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. So, uh, so everyone, I'll put links below to, to all of your channels on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, etc. So yeah. make sure you guys all head over there and follow Milos and, and all of his uh, all of his things. And again, thank you so much for coming on, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. Thank you for having me on. It was it was really fun. You got it. And everyone else, thank you guys for for joining us today um, on episode eighty eight. Here, uh, we've got two more episodes, I think, before the end of the year. So uh, for those of you. Uh, uh, who want to keep continuing on i've got two awesome guests and, and appreciate it. the replay of this will be available right after we finish so feel free to come back check it out and so on make sure you subscribe to the channel here on youtube subscribe to milos's channel if you haven't as well over on youtube um and then also uh head on over to community.bimafterdark.com to check out the um uh, bim after dark community and, and become a member and see all the cool stuff inside there with that i want to bid you all adieu have an awesome weekend and uh, i'll talk to you guys soon